Let's talk to Nate calling in from Canada. Nate, you've been on the line for a bit. Nate, what is happening tonight? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Absolutely. We're going all around the world today. So how can I help you, Nate? Yeah. I I just want to say real quick to your previous caller, Adrian, uh, Mm -hmm. if if you're looking for additional support, you can always call into Recovering From Religion. Yes. uh, Recoveringfromreligion.org. I myself am a volunteer and uh, and we would love to help you out, man. So any anytime you need to reach out, Adrian, by all means, use that resource. We would yes. love to talk to you. And let me sing my praises of it too. The Atheist Community of Austin has partnered uh, with them before in the past. They do great stuff. You guys should definitely check it out. Um, hopefully someone can post links to that in the chat as well. So anyway, Nate, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I am an atheist. I've been an atheist for 20 plus years since I was a kid and I lived in a haunted house and your YouTube mm. chat said they wanted to hear a ghost story. Uh, I don't often yes. share this story because I am an atheist and I was an atheist at the time, but, um, but, but it's some, it's some pretty freaky shit, man. Are you ready? Uh, am I fucking ready? Yeah, I am. This show was built for this story right here, Nate. So I've been doing this for two years just so you could call in. So let's go. Awesome. Strap in. Okay. I'll I'll try to go through this quickly. Um, Okay. So when I was about 17, I lived in a house with my partner and a roommate. We had the top two floors. Uh, Another tenant had the ground floor. So when we moved in, we we pretty quickly noticed that the weird things were happening. Uh, like like stuff in the kitchen would get knocked over, lights would turn off and on at random. But um, you know, there were there, there was early joking that it was haunted. But I'm like, you know, this is this is a hundred year old house. We have a mouse problem. It's got old wiring. Like that that more than explains these these random few weird things happening, right? Um, and and it was a I was 17, so it was a pretty busy place, right? Like kids with their own place. We were the the place to be. Um, to get in, you had to walk up a few steps to a landing and then up another seven or eight steps to our door. So we would always know when someone was coming because we could hear the steps coming up, right? And then they would knock on the door, right? So sometimes we'd hear those steps, but nobody would knock. So it kind of became like a running joke, um, that, that we had the ghost visitor again. But I was like, like, again, I was already an atheist at this time. I had just read, um... I read Michael Behe's book, uh, Darwin's Black Box on Intelligent Design, and I was like, wow, that's really fascinating. Maybe maybe there is a gut. Maybe there, maybe evolution isn't real. And mm-hmm. I, I thought, well, let's look at a rebuttal to this. And then I came across uh, Richard Dawkins' book, The Blind Watchmaker, and I was like, oh, oh, okay, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, but again, so sometimes we would hear these steps. No one would knock at the door, but I was trying to sort of debunk this thing. Uh, so I went down, I counted the stairs, I counted the stairs to our door and I counted the stairs to the basement suite because their staircase was directly below ours. And it was okay. five steps to the basement, but to ours, it was one, two, three, four, and then a landing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, knock on the door. Um, so I paid attention the next few times as it happened. And sure enough, it was one, two, three, four, pause, one, two, three, four, and nothing. And I also noticed that it was always around the same time. It was around 10.30 p.m. So I'm like, well, this is weird. One night uh, when it happened, I was waiting, right, because everybody around me was telling me that it was a ghost. And I'm like, you're all crazy. There's no such thing as ghosts. So one, two, three, four, pause, one, two, three, and I ran to the door, and I threw open the door, and there's nothing there. I was expecting some apparition to be standing on the stairs, but nope, nothing and the steps just vanished, right? Okay. So right around this time, one one night, we're all sitting in the living room, um, and we hear this giant crash from the kitchen. We all run out there, and we see that our deep fryer, which had been on the top of the stove, like sitting between the four elements of the stove, right? It was lying in the middle of the kitchen floor in pieces, and there was fryer grease everywhere, mm. right? And And... Things, things did get knocked over a lot in the kitchen, but again, there was a mice problem and it was usually like spices or a, a spoon or something okay. like that. But there's, there's no mouse that can throw a deep fryer. Maybe so, a raccoon or something. Fuck is... <laughs> I hope I'm not spoiling but it. If there was a raccoon, man, he got out of there real quick because we ran to the kitchen. There was nobody in there. 
Mm, okay. We run in there. There's there's nobody there, nothing there except a giant pile of grease on the floor. Mm. So 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 this this was weird. And one night, this this is actually the the last night that we lived there. Um, my friend and I were sitting on the couch. It was pretty late. It was about two a.m. And we were talking about this this ghost experience. And he's like, "Well, there's no other way you can explain this." And I'm like, "Man, there's there's got to be an explanation. Just because we don't know what it is doesn't mean that we default to it's a ghost, right?" Sure, sure, uh, sure. And he he says. Well, if, if it's a ghost, he should show us a sign right now. And at that very second, the television switched off and the hallway light switched on. So we look mm. at each other and we're like, what the fuck? Okay, I'm, I'm going to bed, man. This, <laughs> this is wild. So I go to bed, he goes to bed, um, and I'm lying in bed trying to get to sleep, thinking, you know, my mind's going a mile a minute, and I hear the sound of church bells. Um from from a distance and it d initially didn't seem that weird to me because there was an old timey church a few blocks away that had one of those old timey bell towers right okay um but it started to get louder and then it dawned on me i'm like it's almost 3 a.m why <laughs> is the church ringing its bells right like this is having some twists and turns nate i'll be honest i wasn't expecting this ride but I'm glad I'm on it, I guess. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, I don't tell this story to many people because, again, I, I'm an atheist, like I'm a skeptic, yeah. but this is one thing that I have never, ever been able to wrap my head around. Mm. Um, but these, these bells, they get louder and louder and louder until the point where it's it's like I'm in the bell tower. So I'm scared, right? Like I'm, I'm petrified. I pull the covers over my head and I, and I cover my ears. And right. I stay there for I don't know how long. Um, eventually, I, I come out, and the sound is gone. And, and I am up, right? I am not sleeping at this point. I walk out to the living room, and my friend is sitting there on the couch, my friend that just went to bed, uh, my roommate, and he's crying. And he's like the tough guy of the group, right? And, and he's sitting there on the couch crying. I'm like, Daryl, what's going on? And he's like, it said my fucking name, dude. I was trying to get <laughs> to sleep, and it said my name. It said Daryl. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god damn so he 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 called his parents and they came and picked him up he never went back to that house he like he, he came <laughs> back to get his stuff during the day and that was it uh as for me and my partner we moved out like mid-month we were like we are out of here we are not living here anymore wow so you actually day, moved out because of this specific experience oh yeah wow <laughs> We we moved out like we packed our stuff and we were gone so fast. Dang. And um, I st I remember the address. It's it's eighty five Wellington Street, East Chatham, Ontario. You can look at it on, oh, on Google Maps. I, oh shoot! Twenty years later, I still remember that address. Um, and and again, like this 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 baffles me because I. Again, I was the guy trying to debunk this when the people around me were telling me. Hey, that that's the scariest part of the story. I don't know if you realize that, but that's the scariest part of the story is that you couldn't figure it out. <laughs> because it's one thing yeah. if like I was there or if Matthew was there, if we couldn't figure it out. But then here are you, you. I mean, assuming you have the same skeptical capacities as the rest yeah. of us. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to I, make I of that. already a, a staunch atheist. Yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. this this. I was trying to tell the people around me that like, dude, ghosts aren't real. Gods aren't real. You're all crazy. But <laughs> I mean, how does a deep fryer get thrown off the stove in a room where no, no, no one's. Hey, I still think my raccoon theory holds water. All right. I know you don't believe it, but raccoons are mischievous creatures. You know, that that's a pretty crafty raccoon to get in and out and be like, he's going in all Tom Cruise mission I've, impossible. I've met a crafty raccoon or two in my time. I don't know. They're, listen, he's repelling just... again from the ceiling <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess so ah man nate i'll be honest yeah. there's too many variables in that story to account for i don't know i don't know what to, i mean at, at yeah. best i could say that's a series of weird coincidences and maybe some unexplained natural phenomenon but that's that's all i can say <laughs> that's all i can really tell you there because i mean i wasn't there for it so i don't know i don't know matthew yeah. what do you think i've got i've got nothing because that that's the kind of stuff where 
I'm super agnostic on like I have no it sounds terrible. I would have moved too. I wouldn't have even waited that month. I'd have been like, screw the deposit. I'm out of here. Like, I would have been like your <laughs> friend, man. Like, no, there's no well, way. Nate, let me ask you, do you believe we in ghosts? Out the month, man. We were we were gone in a week. We were out. Oh, okay. Well, do, yeah, that's fair enough. Do you believe in the paranormal now after this experience? I do not. I I have to believe that there is some some bizarre confluence of coincidence that that must explain this. Yeah. Uh, just because I don't know doesn't mean that that the souls of the dead came back to pester a bunch of teenagers, right? Like, yeah. Uh, I I can't explain it, but it it's still it again it's it sticks in my craw, and I don't tell the story often, but. Uh, but but I have I have no idea. Like, yeah, Nate, you you put it that could happen. Like you put it beautifully. It's like yeah, I'm I'm in the same boat as for in regards to your story and just the paranormal in general, right? Like I I believe that confluences of coincidences definitely happen and do happen, and that um the events of Scooby Doo are not necessarily um, a reflection of real life. Like you know, well I I guess maybe they're real life in the sense that there's like some crazy old rich guy behind a lot of evil mm -hmm. in the world. But like like besides that point, right? Like I don't like you know when I'm looking into this stuff, I'm looking into the okay, like where's the lie though? You know what I mean? Like where 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 does this fall apart? Um, and just because we don't have the best explanations at the time, like you say, like doesn't mean that um, the souls of the dead are decided to haunt the living like it's like Eddie Murphy's haunted mansion or something like that. So yeah, I, I I'm in the same boat as you, Nate. In the same boat, so great story. <laughs> yes, fantastic story. I love that. I love that, Nate. Thanks, yeah. thanks for, thanks for. I feel like we were at like a bonfire, just kind of like um, swapping stories there at the end there. But uh, I, I appreciate it, Nate. You have any other um, comments you want to make before we let you go? Yeah, I just wanted to say to Matthew that as a fellow bisexual man, who uh, I have three biological children with a great woman. Uh, we're still friends, and I'm married to a man, and I definitely can uh, can relate to your experience of people just being baffled by the bisexual experience. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's mm. not. I'm not just some sexual opportunist. That's not mm. how it works. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No. Thank you for saying that because um, it, it's amazing how much ignorance there is and how much. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's the maybe it's the non-binary nature of sexuality and people want to put things in a either or gay straight box and um especially they they can't seem to understand monogamy and bisexuality. So, yeah, yeah. thank thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> yes, thank you for validating Matthew here, Nate. You're, yeah. you're, you're you're on a roll tonight. I'm I'm loving what you put down, but um appreciate you calling in for all of that. That was great. Yeah.